Let me first say that having been elected to the Democratic House leadership team, I just want to say I can confirm what many people already know. Nancy Pelosi is a badass. Donald Trump will finally deliver his State of the Union address this Tuesday after Speaker Nancy Pelosi refused to let him set foot in her House chamber during the government shutdown. According to the White House, Trump will call on Congress to, quote, bridge old divisions and heal old wounds, while simultaneously repeating his demand for a border wall, all while standing in front of the lady who took him to Constitution School. Jason Johnson and E.J. Dionne are back with me and joining me now, Nayara Hawk, former White House senior advisor. Nayara, I'm going to start with you and let me play Nancy Pelosi. This was back on January 17th, and it's, um, this is her talking about postponing the State of the Union during the shutdown. The, of the State of the Union is not a sacred date. It's not constitutionally required. It's not any president's birthday. It's not anything. It is a date that we agreed to. It could have been the week later. And it could be the week later if government is open. So it isn't as if that date is sacred for any reason. She said, it's not his birthday. I don't have to, like, buy him a cake or anything. He can have it in writing. Like, literally, Donald Trump was told... No cake for you. No cake. No cake. So what is it going to be like optically just to have that lady <laughs> behind him on one side and the very adoring Mike Pence, who I'm sure will be, you know, being very sort of breathlessly adoring of him on the other side of him? That, what is that book going to be Pelosi, like? Pelosi, don't play. No. no. So she's, she's going to have that look on her face of mm -hmm. somewhat disdain and that, yeah. that maternal chagrin of, I'm going to have to correct you again, toddler, when you get out of control, <laughs> yeah. which is, I think, part of what scares Donald Trump about her <laughs> is that she really is a symbol of female power and feminine power, what that yeah. means. So the, the idea that Donald Trump's going to be up there trying to uh, heal old wounds and divisions, it's not going to be the ones that are in the country right now. He's not going to be trying to appeal to the uh, party that just took over Congress. He's going to be trying to heal the divisions in the conservative party and justify to the Mitch McConnells of the world who have not disavowed him, who have not left a, a, uh, the GOP, that he has delivered for them. He's delivered for them on judges, on the Supreme Court and the federal benches. He's going to try to deliver on abortion rights, and he's delivered on the tax cut. So he's going to use this as a bit of a victory lap to try to bring some of those people back into the fold to make up for the fact that he has been racist, he has been sexist, he has been... Uh, subservient to the Russians, uh, dangerous for national security, and try to heal the divisions in the Republican Party, with Pelosi sitting behind him, effectively showing that the country's headed in a different direction. Yeah, but, you know, EJ, he's, he's delivered for Republicans on the things they already wanted, right? I mean, the thing that he can't get is the thing he wants, which is the wall, which they don't seem to care about at all. But yet, Donald Trump, it's going to be interesting to see how he plays it, because up to now, he's been blaming all his inability to get his money for the wall that was supposed to come from Mexico on Nancy Pelosi. Take a listen. I think Nancy Pelosi is doing a terrible disservice to the people of our country. But You're still going to have to deal with her, no, though. No, she can keep playing her games, but we will win because we have a much better issue. EJ, do you expect Donald Trump to have the, the guts to say that to her, to her face, or at least say it in front of her while she's behind him? At the um, you know, I, first of all, I can't wait to s take a pool on how many times the camera does go to Nancy Pelosi's face. <laughs> and by the way, I think she's going to be very disciplined. She's not always going to show uh, disdain. She know, I think she's going to calibrate this carefully. Secondly, I think that there is a contradiction that lies at the heart of what the Trump uh, White House is putting out, that he wants to be bipartisan, that this is the guy who said what he just said there about Nancy Pelosi. This is the guy um, who says outrageous things about the wall and what Democrats are doing. And so I think there's going to be a lot of whiplash in this speech. I think that I, I'd be very surprised if he can resist not taking shots at the Democrats. And yet, if he doesn't, if he tries to be unifying, it flies in the face of virtually everything he's done, because Donald Trump's political project depends upon dividing the country, particularly on issues like immigration and race. And I don't know how he can pull off being a unifying figure, which is how they say he wants to be on Tuesday. Yeah, well, he's trying to get that somebody to say, this is the day he became president. That's his right. goal, right? Which to say we... one line that makes somebody <laughs> fall for it and, and say it. Um, you know, you covered uh, the Stacey Abrams campaign pretty extensively, Jason. So I want to get your response to the fact that she was chosen to give the response. Um, let me just read you a quick bit from an Atlantic article on why. Uh, quote, and it says, the, and this is um, by, uh, the, and it's from Wednesday. 
Um, the real function of these televised speeches sandwiched between hours of nitpicking commentary is to signal that a party has identified its chosen speaker as a rising star. Abrams, who narrowly lost the Georgia governor's race to Republican Brian Kemp in November, has perhaps become more prominent and integral to the party since her defeat. The speech will likely function less as an acknowledgment of her potential and more of a genuine rebuttal to Donald Trump. Your thoughts? Yeah, I, look, first off, Joy, this is a huge, huge, huge boon for Stacey Abrams. We, we were talking about Justin Fairfax before. If Justin Fairfax is like Tom Brady, the backup quarterback who we know one day is going to be the star, like, like Stacey's already Drew Brees. Like, everyone already roots for her. They're mad that she lost, and they can't wait to see what she's going to end up doing next. Uh, I've talked to some of her campaign team down here. Look, she's actually writing this speech herself, even though she got offered a lot of help uh, from, from Senator Schumer and from Nancy Pelosi. And also remember, Stacey Abrams is a writer. So expect a very personal speech. Expect a very passionate speech. She was already the most Google politician in America in 2018. So this is not so much a coming out party. This is an announcement party that this might be the new face of the Democratic Party. Is this also, I, um, is this also Jason, uh, the attempt by the Democratic Party to try to push her to run for the United States Senate, something that they seem to really, <laughs> really want her to do? That seems to be something that people are discussing and on here. Uh, there's no definitive answer one way or another, but I suspect if you get the opportunity to be the rebuttal to Donald Trump mm -hmm. and be the face of the Democratic Party, there's a very good chance that, yes, there are people who think that Stacey Abrams has a political future that may lead her yeah. to run in 2020. It, 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 it's also a big recognition of what they're acknowledging as a party now. And, like, if you go from 2016 right. with um, Joe Kennedy to now, two years later, a black woman, yeah. that is a signal that the party is starting to understand and leadership is understanding who really holds them up, and it's black women voters. Yeah, it, it, And sorry. I think there were a couple of things about Stacey Abrams. I love those football Super Bowl-appropriate references <laughs> earlier. But I, there are two things, I think, in addition that are important about Stacey Abrams. One is she describes herself as both a progressive and a pragmatist. Those are now said to be on opposite sides of the Democratic Party, and she very consciously brings those together. Right. Secondly, she is an optimist, and a lot of her talk is about hope. And I think that's going to stand in really sharp contrast to the kind of America that Donald Trump's uh, describes, and I think that will prove to be very useful to the party, whether she runs for the Senate or not. Yeah, I think Brian Kemp should not get too comfortable because she does seem to want to really be governor, so it's not like she's going <laughs> to walk away from that opportunity. Now, you know, what does it mean that the, the real sort of opposition to Donald Trump is now female? It, it is Nancy Pelosi. It is Stacey Abrams. This is setting up to be, that the, it, you know, it's Elizabeth Warren. That's what the opposition is. And Kamala Harris. It's Kirsten Kamala Hiller, Harris. It is, it's women and women of right. color. And there is a whole variety of women to choose from in the sense of where they fall in the progressive spectrum and yeah. where they fall in the liberal spectrum. It's going to be very interesting to see where the Republican women or the women who voted for Donald Trump, where they end up in this. Do, are they going to have some of the same challenges of internalized misogyny yeah. when it comes to the Democratic slate? Right, we're, we're out of time, but I'm going to let you all get a quick Super Bowl prediction if you'd like. Would you like, Nair, to give a Super I'm Bowl gonna prediction? I'm going to pass. All right, Jason. Uh, I, Jason? My, it, 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 it's the Patriots. I hate them, but the Patriots are going to win today. Oh, Jason. No, come on, the, EJ. Bring me up. Bring me up here, man. It's the Patriots, and I love them, and it's the most unpopular thing I'll say on this show today. Bye, but I'm a bye, New Englander through bye, and through. Bye, <laughs> bye, EJ. Bye. <laughs> bye. At least they play. Bye. Now you and Jason can come back. Bye. <laughs> I love you, but bye. I'm, I'm so sorry to lose you, Joy, but <laughs> I... I'm Bye. not giving them up. <laughs> Bye. Food, fashion, and football is next.